Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Welcome to Freestyle Friday where I get to do what I want. It's my last one of the sessions I'm doing. Anyway, glassware doesn't matter. Wait, what? Glassware doesn't matter? Well, for many people, no. And by that, I mean using those specially made wine glasses. You know, the ones that are made for specific parts of the world or grape varieties. Does that mean just any glass will work? Well, for just drinking, yeah. Use a coffee cup if you want. I wouldn't recommend it, but if that's all you have, then yes, use it. However, I do suggest using a standard wine glass for wine. Bam, like this. The wine glass as we know it didn't really come about until the 1400s in Venice. And they were much smaller than we have right now probably something like this. Now you can find a typical glass that can fit almost an entire bottle in it, like this one. Anyway, back then there were various taxes on glass. Plus glass wasn't nearly as strong as it is today. In the 1700s, the English figured out how to make stronger glass. This was extremely important for champagne bottles and all sparkling wines, but it benefited any use of glass, including wine glasses. This meant that glasses got bigger. So, it wasn't like in the 1700s they were this big, but over time they got bigger. You had bigger bowls, longer stems, right? I don't know when the idea that the stem became important for drinking wine other than being ornamental, but we hold our glass by the stem for a reason. If we we're doing everything all proper like, then the wine should be served at a proper temperature. And because of this, holding a wine glass by the bowl rather than the stem will start warming the wine. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. As the wine warms up, it will change. It'll open up more. The idea is that holding by the bowl will raise the temperature too fast. It's confusing because we will tell you to only hold it by the stem. Yet, when we serve a white wine or a sparkling wine, many psalms will ask if you'd like the bottle to stay in the table or in the ice bucket. It's not a trick question, actually, especially how most restaurants serve these wines. Both are served ice cold. A white wine should be served at a serving temperature somewhere between 40 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Sparkling needs to be initially served ice cold. A lot of that has to do with the safety of opening a bottle because a cold bottle of champagne is easier to keep control of the cork. A warm bottle has higher pressure, so it's harder to control the cork. This also means that there's less likelihood of the wine just spewing out when it's that cold. But once it's opened, letting it get to that 40 to 50 degree range is actually good. For red wines, add about 10 degrees Fahrenheit to the white wine temperature, so 50 to 65 degrees. All right, so in both cases, the lighter the wine, the colder it should be served. So we should hold it by the bowl at first. No, yeah, it's silly. Serve a white wine cold, but not too cold, unless it's sparkling, but let it warm up. But don't touch the bowl of the glass because your body heat's gonna scorch the wine. All right, so how fast is your body heat gonna warm up the wine? For a sip of wine, not at all. I've been at tastings where the white wine was served straight from the beer cooler and all the Psalms are like, they're cupping their glasses in an effort to warm up the wine. You know how long that takes? I don't, but it takes forever. I don't know the science on that. All right, if you constantly hold the glass by the actual glass and the stem for long periods of time, or never even put the glass down, then yes, the wine will warm up to a less than ideal temperature. Does it ruin it? No, just diminishes the whole experience. Now back to glasses. What's really important when it comes to a wine glass? Do I need all these specialty glasses? How big of a glass do I need? How much wine do I need to pour in the glass? Well, I'm glad you asked. To me, the most important thing about a wine glass is the bowl. Now there isn't a perfect type of bowl, but if it's described as a Bordeaux style glass like this one, then it is a good overall wine glass. As far as needing different types of glasses, for the most part, just stick to a red and a white wine glass. I personally only have one true set of wine glasses, and that's these from Wine Folly. 
I bought them when they were 150 bucks for a set of six. Now they're 167 for a set of six. That's their discounted price. And they have a good enough universal shape. Other than these, I have a menagerie of glasses. As you can see, there's a very selection, very sizes, bowl shapes. Uh, some have a logo on them or some writing. And those are basically freebies. Even a couple are what are kind of a specialty glass. Um, but most of these are like the only one I have. Like in this case, these are actually legit Riedels, and I got these, if I remember correctly, at a Riedel uh, demonstration. And I won't go into all that, but other than the fact that these are different shaped glasses. If I remember correctly, this is a burgundy glass, though. Some burgundy glasses I know don't have this quite this, quite this taper, but it it's, does have a wide bowl that tapers up to a smaller opening. And if I remember correctly, this is a Syrah, Pinot Noir, I'm sorry, and Syrah glass. When it comes to getting a burgundy glass like this one, or a glass specifically for like Syrah, like I just said, or Cabernet Sauvignon, et cetera, consider this. First, the cost. If you can afford different specialty glasses, then feel free. These are Riedels. I got them for free because I went to a, a seminar, but a set of these is not cheap. If you thought this was a lot for six of these, this is a lot more, okay? Anyway, um, then space. I don't know about you, but we've got a lot of stuff in our cabinets. This is from decades of accumulation. So I barely have room for any more glasses. So for me, I'm not buying any more. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna get any freebies. As far as specialty wine glasses, to me, the only type of glass to consider outside of a generic red and a white is a burgundy glass. It's designed for Pinot Noir. You can also use it for other wines like Beaujolais, Nebbiolo, Grenache, Age, Rioja, Chianti Classico, Minthia, Blanc Francais, you get the point. Red wines that have lighter aromatics. So yes, expanding on this is fine if you're going for more granularity. However, for the average person, even for the average person who frequently enjoys wine, my previous recommendations of two to three types of glasses actually should be fine. Now, if you're really into wine and you're drinking many types of wines and your palate is you know, really such that you're really great at distinguishing a whole bunch of different wines and you want to you know, really delve into this stuff, feel free to get these specialty glasses. All right, that brings me to the next part. When it comes to how the wine hits your tongue, each type of glass will do something different and it's all based on how the lip is shaped. This is where it gets a little like voodoo to me. It's not that there isn't a difference, it's just that really for the average person, and this is the basis for basically all of this, um, the average person won't be able to tell the difference. Not enough for it to matter. So at that Riedel seminar, not just the, the shape of these glasses, but the lip is shaped slightly differently so that Pinot Noir or similar type wine will hit the tongue in a certain spot and the Syrah will hit the tongue in a different spot. If I put Pinot Noir in this one and Syrah in this one, they should taste different. Did they taste different? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a few years since I did it. Yes and no. But that's me. Maybe my palate, especially back then, wasn't as sophisticated. Anyway, the most important part about the wine glass is really the size and shape of the bowl. What about stemless? Well, I'd say that stemless glassware has its purpose. For those easy to drink entry level wines, then go for it especially the plastic ones if you're by a pool or on the beach, basically anywhere where having glass is dangerous. We're not drinking Chateau Margaux in these situations, and if you do roll that deep, man, give me a call. Stemless are also easier to wash in a dishwasher compared to many traditional wine glasses. What about those champagne flutes or coupes? It's not really a coupe, but close enough. I would avoid those. A regular white wine glass or ideally a tulip style is what you want. Now, this is because flutes and coupes don't show sparkling wine at its best. Flutes are great for showing off the bubbles. The coupe, I know the story behind the shape, which I'll link to below, but as far as a good glass to drink champagne, it's too broad of a bowl. The tulip gives you a more narrow bowl to allow the bubbles to be visible, but wide enough along with the taper to allow the aromas to collect. Just remember that white wine glasses are still a good option and maybe better for those richer, bolder sparkling wines. So how big of a bowl? Well, for a universal glass like this or this, it can hold around 16 ounces. These actually do hold 16 ounces of liquid. I measured them. And that will give you enough headspace to swirl the wine, allow the aromas to collect. A, a tapered opening also helps collect those aromas. Now a white wine glass, 
maybe closer to 14 ounces. I actually didn't measure this, but this is somewhere between 12 and 14. And then a bigger red wine glass, like this one, like I already said, holds up to 25 ounces. Yes, I didn't measure it. The bowl size is only one part of enjoying a wine. The amount you pour is also important. In the US and Europe, a standard, as in the governmental standard, pour is five ounces or about 150 milliliters. This glass from Wine Folly has two lines etched into the glass. One is for five ounces, which you probably can't see, but there's, it's like right there. And that's approximately 150 milliliters. And the other is for two and a half ounces or approximately 75 milliliters. While I'm not a stickler for these two types of pours, I do like that I have these lines on here. So when I'm pouring, especially at home or when I'm pouring here, I don't like, I'm not like lining all up to make sure I'm getting the 75 centiliter, you know, or 75 milliliter, not centiliter. 75 centiliters of full bottle of wine. But anyway, I'm not necessarily looking at those lines, but I kind of know where two ounces is or two and a half ounces is on the glass. But anyway, when it comes to restaurants here in the US at least, a standard pour is anywhere from four to six ounces. Most settle with five or six ounces, with some going higher. At five ounces, you get right about five glasses of wine from my bottle. At six, you get slightly more than four glasses. A standard wine bottle is 750, which is 25.4 ounces, 750 milliliters, that is. So if you are at a decent restaurant or a wine bar, then they should be using, you know, at least something like these glasses, right? Most casual less restaurants will have like one glass, like this one. Fine dining might have something like this, and then you'll have the white wine glass, and then maybe you'll have something like this for, you know, say a burgundy, right? Though, if you're going to do that, it, it'll be, my experience it was a little more tapered. And those glasses, those really big ones, may only hold 22 ounces. Even like the Bordeaux style glass, um, they might be just bigger, like, like a little bit wider and a little bit taller, and they'll hold like about 20 something ounces, right? But the idea of these bigger bowls, as I'm playing, you know, three card Monty with these, is that when you pour the wine in there, as you've seen in my reviews, and I'm only doing a couple ounces, but even at four or six ounces, you have enough space up here to swirl that wine without it going flying out, and then it allows the aromas to collect. While there are plenty of different glasses out there, having a basic set of wine glasses will help you enjoy most wines, even this, right? Branch out as your palate grows and, and expands. At the same time, balance your storage space, costs, and how much extra benefit you're actually getting. Now, one last word about this glass. This is a Libby glass I bought at Walmart for, I don't know, I think a set of four was probably like 20 bucks, maybe 30, I don't remember. It was a long, long time ago and I only have like two of these left. I think I bought like two, two boxes of them. So if you're just starting out like enjoying wine, this is absolutely totally fine. It's a Bordeaux style glass. It fits 16 ounces. You pour a little bit up to here and you can plenty of swirl. If you wanna get fancy like this, that's what I did. I wanted something that looked better on camera and I wanted something that had a little more universal uh, shape to it that was good enough for like red and white and basically everything. But you can do whatever you want. If you use, if you're getting a bunch of freebies, small ones, that's fine. Just something like this is just really not good for like swirling wine because you can't really put enough in there. I've had, I've gone to restaurants like super, super casual restaurants that this is the wine glass. I got my wine in and they fill it all the way to the top because they're giving you a four ounce pour because that's probably all it's in here. Anyway, that's going to do it for this today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends about it. And until next time, boom, we'll see you later.